Yes. We also know that uh, there was no knife that was found up in the bathroom area, right? Yes. So we know that you took it, right? I don't remember having the knife at all afterward. But there was no knife up there, right? Not, I haven't heard any testimony about that. So would you would acknowledge, ma'am, that One ninety-three. That Mr. Alexander was stabbed. You would acknowledge that, right? Yes. And you would acknowledge that that stabbing was with the knife, right? Yes. And according to your version of events. You would acknowledge that that stabbing was after the shooting, according to you, right? Yeah, I don't, yes, I don't remember. I'm, I, I'm not asking you if you remember, ma'am. I'm asking if you acknowledge that it would be you that did it, correct? Yes. And you would acknowledge that a lot of the stab wounds, and if you want, we can count them together, including the ones to the head, were to the back of the head and to the back of the torso, correct? Okay. Well, no, I'll I don't count them. I don't know. Let's take your word for it. Would you like to take a look at the photograph? <laughs> no. We've... So if he is being stabbed in the back, would you acknowledge at that point that he's no threat to you, right? Objection calls for speculation. Overruled. I don't know. Well, if he's already been shot, according to you, and he's facing away from you, how could he have possibly be any threat to you? I could only guess. I don't know what you're asking me. Well, with regard to the... You were here when the medical examiner testified about the wound to the throat. Do you remember that? Yes. With regard to that wound, ma'am, you would acknowledge that that was, in terms of the stab wounds, you would acknowledge that that was the last wound in the sequence of events. Overall, that wasn't. How can she acknowledge the sequence of the stabs that she doesn't know what they, when, doesn't have any memory of them? That wasn't the question. Overall, do you may answer the question. Are you talking about his testimony? Yes. I disagree with the secrets of events. Would you agree that you're the person who actually slit Mr. Alexander's throat from ear to ear? Yes. Would you also agree that you're the individual that stabbed him in the upper torso. Yes. And you're doing all of this to, in the, according to your version of events, you're doing to this to this individual after you have already shot him, right? Yes. Correct. I believe so. Well, no. Do you remember previously talking to us about how he was coming at you and he was this horrible man with his mean face? Do you remember telling me that? Yes, I didn't say he was horrible. Okay. Thank you for correcting me, but do you remember telling us that he was a mean man? Not today. Well, Not today. previously, previously you did say that he was a mean man, correct? I think I did, yes. And on this particular occasion, you told us that he was cursing at you, right? Yes. And that he threw you down, right? Yes. That he chased you down, right? Yes. And this is the individual that you shot first, right? I didn't know if I shot him. I just threw that went off. The gun went off. Right? You can at least acknowledge that. Correct? Yes. That's something that you did here, correct? Yes. 
Now, one of the things that uh, we also know is that there was this rope that was involved earlier in the evening or in the day at 1 o'clock. Do you remember telling us about that, about 1.30? Yes. And it involved this sexual interlude with you and Mr. Alexander, right? Yes. And you told us that it went behind the headboard? Yes. The police did not find a rope there, correct? Um, yes. You took that rope, didn't you? Yes. Why would you take that rope, ma'am, if you were in the fog? I don't know. I don't remember taking it. The rope, according to you, didn't have anything to do with the killing, did it? No, not that I remember. Well, but you acknowledge that there was this rope that was taken, right? Yes. Don't you also acknowledge that you were the one that threw it away? Yes. So then you would acknowledge that you're the person that took it, right? Um, yes. And even though you were in this fog, as you call it, you knew as you're walking in this fog to go looking around for this particular rope, as you say, right? Um, I don't know. Well, you did say that you did take it, right? Yes. And in fact, you remember where you threw it away, right? Um, I think it was in a dumpster. Right, you said you threw it away in a dumpster, right? Yeah. Well, other than that, it would show that you had been there, ma'am. Why take the rope and then get rid of it? I don't know. Maybe for that very reason, I don't know. So you did take the rope then? You yeah. also changed clothing, right? Um, I think I did. I don't... I well, you I... said that you pulled off the side of the road in the desert, right? Yes. And that you said that you went to the trunk of the car, right? Yes. Isn't it true, ma'am, that that's where you claim to have the gas cans? That's where they were. Pardon? <laughs> yes, that's where they were. And so the gas cans and the gas were in the back with the water, right? Yes, the case of water and my suitcase. And you found that you had some blood on you, correct? Yes. And back then, that was at the time that there was this stop or security checkpoint before Hoover Dam, right? I pulled over before that shot. Right. You were not so much in a fog that you didn't know that the checkpoint existed, right? I did not know that the checkpoint existed. Well, you just told me that was when the checkpoint point was there. Do you remember telling me that just now? I came to know of its existence when I drove up to it, or when there was a sign or something. But conveniently, or to your advantage, you stopped the car before you got to the checkpoint, right? Uh, a long time before the checkpoint when I called Ryan or texted somebody or Leslie or someone. So, so the answer is yes, correct? Yes. And one of the things that you did was that you got the water from the trunk, right? Um, yes. You cleaned your hands, right? Yes. And you... Um, change your socks or put some shoes on, correct? Um, I put socks and shoes on, I think. Right, and you took the clothes, the bloody clothes that you had on, you took those off, right? Um, I think I did. Well, do you remember testifying that you threw them away, along with the gun? I don't recall throwing my clothes out in the desert, but... But you did change in anticipation of the checkpoint, right? No, I didn't know there was a checkpoint until I reached it. Well, you will acknowledge that this changing and washing of hands occurred before you got to the checkpoint, whether you knew or not that the checkpoint was there. That's correct. And you would agree that it was to your advantage to be, to have clean hands, and clothing that is not soiled with blood if you're going to go through a checkpoint, correct? That wasn't my line of thinking, but I would agree with what you said. And then, 
You are making some calls at that time, aren't you? Prior to the checkpoint, yes. You have the, I guess, the um, ability to say, I'm going to look through the car to see if I can find my charger, right? Um, I wasn't looking for my charger, but I looked through the car. You were looking through the car then when you pulled over, right? Yes. And when you pulled over, you found the charger according to you underneath the seat, right? Yes. And that allowed you to make some telephone calls, right? Not right away because there was no reception. Right, but you, were, you made some telephone calls before you reached the Arizona-Nevada border, right? Yes, I turned my phone on and it just took a while to place a call because right. the call kept dropping. It was before the checkpoint, right? Yes. And while you were driving, were you driving at that time when the telephone was uh, in a position to make calls out? I believe, yes. So when it first came on so that it had the ability for calls to be made, how far was it to the checkpoint? It felt like an hour. Felt like an hour? Do you I know where Kingman is? No. And when this telephone came on, you started to make telephone calls, right? I attempted to. I was only able to send, I think, text messages. I realize that you're, you're, you're talking about text messages. I'm, telling, I'm talking about telephone calls. You were able to call Ryan Burns, right? Yes. And, you were, and even though you were in this fog that you're telling us about, you were able to call him and make up a lie, right? Um, the fog that I was referring to relates to my memory. Right, it relates to your memory, so you, you could have told Mr. Burns that you were with uh, Mr. Alexander, but you didn't, right? That's right. Instead, you made up a story, didn't you? Yes. So this fog that you're talking about, it wasn't so heavy <laughs> that it prevented you from thinking and making up a lie. Um, yes, that's right. You made up a lie that you uh, had lost your charger, right? Yes. You made up a lie that you had gone to a gas station to get the charger, right? No, that's not what I told him. And so, Mr. Burns is full of crap when he tells us that. No, he just has a poor memory on some things. And. You know that based on you, that one limited time that you met with him in West Jordan, Utah, correct? No, I know that from all his inconsistent statements to police. But you only met him one time, right? Um, as, as a romantic interest. Yes. And so you also told him that you got lost, right? Um, I did say that. That was also not true, correct? Um, well, technically it was, but not for the reason I was telling him. No, you actually, ma'am, you knew where you were going. You were going over to Mr. Alexander's house. You knew that, right? No, I got lost after leaving his house is what I mean, so technically I did get lost, but that's not why I told Ryan that. Even though there's this technicality, are you telling us that when you told Mr. Burns that you got lost, that you were clear with him that the reason you got lost was that you'd killed Mr. Alexander and you had been driving and you'd been lost that way? Or did you tell him that you got lost a different way? I don't remember what way. I think I made up something stupid and I certainly didn't tell him I got lost about Travis. I told him I got lost right. to deceive him. So even in this fog, you still have the ability to think to protect yourself, right? Um, yes. And the other thing that you did is you attempted to call Matthew McCartney, right? Yes. And you also attempted to call Mr. Brewer, right? Um, I don't remember, I might have. One of the other things that you did, and you know, we were talking about protecting yourself, one of the other things that you did is that you plant, you Immediately, almost immediately, when you say you come out of this fog, one of the first things that you do is you try to 
divert attention away from you so that the police won't think that you had anything to do with this killing, right? Yes. And this fog that you were under that you're telling us about is not so deep that it stops you from fabricating or attempting to fabricate evidence, right? Um, that would be correct. And it's not so deep that, according to you, you can stay on the telephone and know the prompt so that you can get the telephone message just right, according to you, right? Well, just so that I wasn't crying in the message, yes. Right. But you want the message to be just so, so that it sounds natural, right? Yeah, as natural as possible. Right, and you went to great lengths to do that, according to you, right? Yes. And the reason that you went to great lengths to do that was that so that if there was any suspicion, it wouldn't be drawn to you, correct? Um, not immediately. That's That was the point, yes. Right, you wanted to the police to look elsewhere, right? Um, I guess. Well, no, you made the call knowing the reason why you made the call, right? Yes. If you really weren't wanting to fabricate evidence, you would have just left whatever message instead of worrying about crying or whatever it was that you were worried about, right? That's right. And so you called Mr. Alexander and you left him a message, right? Yes. Just play it and hear what you said. This is exhibit number 365. Mr. Alexander indicating that you got lost fun fun right yes that's not true right that's not true uh, asking him or talking to him about coming up to visit you up in Wairika and doing some of the things that you mentioned you know that's not true also right no that was our plan before June 4th that was the plan before June 4th but you're talking to him or leaving the message for him indicating that, you know, you're sorry, you couldn't stop by, but you guys can make up for it up in when he comes up to visit you, right? Yes. That's a lie. Yes. And all of these lies, ma'am, are meant for your benefit so that you can escape responsibility. I don't see how that's to my benefit, but I don't know what you mean by benefit, but yeah, so I could escape whatever for the time being. Well, not you keep saying for the time being. You would have been happy to avoid the consequences for a lifetime, wouldn't have you? Um, I can't say I would be happy, but I you don't know. You would have preferred that, though, right? You have some relevance. I... I don't know how to answer that. Well, 
You didn't go to the police with any of your information ever until they contacted you, right? Um, I think I initiated the contact. Oh, so you're saying when you called the police, you told them the truth? No, I'm not saying that. You would have been satisfied to avoid any responsibility for the killing of Mr. Alexander, wouldn't you? I don't know if satisfied is the word, probably relieved for the time okay. being. Okay, you would have been relieved to avoid any consequences for the killing of Mr. Alexander, correct? Um, that was, that was my goal right. that day. And that's why you left this message that we heard in exhibit number 365, right? Yes, well but that's part of the reason. Well, that was the main reason, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, there would be really no other reason to leave a dead man a telephone call, would there? I probably wouldn't have done that, but Leslie said she um, called his phone asking for me because I was missing, and then I thought, well, maybe I should do something about that, and that's why I did it. So ultimately, that was the main reason, yes. So you're looking to Leslie Udy as the reason why you left that telephone call, man? No. I said the other to avoid whatever was all the ultimate well, reason. You, you gave me a reason involving Leslie Udy right now, didn't you? Yes. So I wouldn't have thought to leave him a message if, she'd hadn't, if I hadn't talked to her prior to leaving that message. And then she said that um, we've been calling and we called Travis and left a message and that kind of thing. But she told you that, ma'am, believing that he was still alive, didn't she? Yes. You knew better, though. Um, I think I did. And so you didn't have to follow her advice, right? She didn't give me any advice. Well, you didn't have to follow her words, did you? Um, I didn't have to, but it reminded me of his cell phone, and that's... But it I chose to like do it. I chose to. I'm not, if you're going down the route saying, Leslie made me do that, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying Leslie made you do it. I'm saying you're looking again in a personal relationship, in an issue that is absolutely yours to own. You're looking for somebody else saying, Leslie Udy, I talked to her, and as a result of talking to Leslie Udy, that's why I left this. Objection, are you Ma'am, Leslie Udy really didn't have anything to do with that call, right? I made the call. I just got the idea after speaking with her. So she was the reason why you had the idea then? Um, that kind of, I guess. And according to you, if it had not been for Leslie Udy, you wouldn't have thought about it, right? Um, I probably might have thought of it eventually, but maybe not. I don't know. I just know that I thought of it after she mentioned she had left a message on his voicemail. And so because of this outside stimulus, you decided to leave this message, right? It was your decision. It was my decision. Just like visiting Mr. Alexander was your decision, right? Yes. On June 4th of 2008, it was your decision, right? Yes. Um, even though you told us before that he guilted you, that really wasn't the reason that you went. You wanted to go, correct? Part of me did and part of me didn't. Obviously the bigger part of me did because I went and he did guilt me and ultimately still was my decision. And so you made the decision to go though, right? Yes. And then though, after that, you did something else to cover up, didn't you? Yes. Take a look at another exhibit. Yes. It's a text message that you sent, correct? Yes. What's the date on it? The 6th of June. Pardon? June 6, 2008. And it's to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. 
And again, the hours are off by seven, correct? Um, yeah, I didn't look at the hours. So. Well, why don't you just take a look at the hours just so that we can make sure. Okay. They're off by seven, correct? Yes. First of all, that's your telephone number there on the left, correct? That was, yes. And the date there is 6 6 of 08, correct? Yes. If we take the seven hours away from the 1658, what we're really talking, and the seven hours from 1658, what we're really talking about is what, 9.58 in the morning, is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> this is while you were still on the road, right, home, correct? Yes, I believe it was. And why don't you read to us what the message is that you left for Mr. Alexander? Hey, I need to know when you're going to deposit that check. And you were referring to the check involving the car, right? Yes. The check that you know was uncashed in his um, desk in his office, right? Um, I don't didn't know where it was, but I figured it wasn't. Cashed. Now, in fact, there was a conversation that you had with the detective where you talked to him about the uncashed check, correct? Yes. So you knew it was uncashed, correct? By, yeah, when it, by the time it hadn't cleared on the, whenever I talked to him, I knew it was uncashed. But another thing that you knew on this date is that Mr. Alexander was dead, didn't you? Yeah, I think I did. And you did that again so that you could cover up what you had done, right? Yes. Because you did not want to be faced with whatever consequences were involved, right? I was afraid of the consequences. And because you were afraid, that was a good enough excuse for you to send something like that. Restate. The reason that you said, gave to us that you were afraid, in your mind, even though the fog had lifted or there was a fog that was involved, you felt that it was okay to send this message. I didn't feel it was okay. It's not like that. So I guess that would be no. Well, then why are you sending it? Are you sending it so that it can reach him in the grave or what? No. You're sending it so that, as you previously said, involving the telephone calls, so you won't have to face the consequences of what you did, right? Yes. Just like the scene, you're trying to manipulate the evidence, right? Yes. Take a look at another exhibit. his email. And what date and time was it sent? Saturday, June 7, 2008. What time? I'm sorry, um, 10 21. I move for the admission to exhibit 505 is admitted. It's 
take a look at it. It's from you, right? Yeah. And you've already told us the date and time. You're sending it to him even though you know he's dead, right? It's a way to stage the scene, right? I think so, yeah. That was my goal, I think. What was... I didn't hear you. That was my... Goal, right? Yeah. Why don't you start with, hey you, and read to us what it says. Hey you, I haven't heard back from you. A little you. bit louder. <laughs> The fact that it was sent is enough. Upper. Hey you, I haven't heard back from you. I hope you're not still upset that I didn't come to see you. I just didn't have enough time off. It's okay, sweetie. You're going to be here in less than two weeks. We're going to see the sights. You also write, check things off the list, and all kinds of fun things, right? Yes. You say Oregon is beautiful this time of year. Yay, be happy, correct? And then you say, anyway, I wanted to let you know that I'm thinking about pushing my visit up to next week, but it depends on my budget, so I'm not sure yet. I know you'll be in Cancun, but I'll probably crash at your house in your cozy bed anyway. Eat some of your oatmeal and frozen dinners. You know, the usual joke. I know you said the door is always open, but I wanted to give you a heads up. If for any reason that won't work, let me know and I'll make other arrangements. Your house has always been my second home, although it's a bit more lonely without naps around. You're probably in, Mex in California right now, but wherever you are, but wherever you are, Get a hold of me, at least before you head to Mexico. Thanks, hon, Jody. You wrote that, right? Yes. That was your way of a, an attempt for you to, again, stage the scene, so to speak, right? Yes. 